Okay, this is a good room. I like this room. It feels good. What did you guys think of this episode? Right? I know we didn't show you the whole first episode, but that's only because we have the cast and the producers here to find out more of what's coming in all of season two. So I'm going to start bringing people out. First up, executive producer Darren Swimmer. Executive producer Todd Slapkin. <laughs> Executive producer Matt Manfredi. Executive producer Phil Hay. Are you guys ready? She plays Constance Contreras. Please welcome Marta Kessler. Slappy <laughs> five. Yeah. She plays Kate Weatherall. Welcome, Emmy de Oliveira. He plays George Sticky Washington. Welcome, Seth Carr. Hi, Seth. And he plays Rennie Muldoon. Welcome, Mystic Insco. And you guys, number two is here. Please welcome Kristen Shaw. <laughs> and he's a producer, and he stars as both Mr. Benedict and L.D. Curtin. Welcome Tony Hale. Okay, I'm jumping right in because as you guys all saw, the show really, boom, stuff happens right off the bat. Um, my first question is actually from Mystic. Are you ready? Mm. So I, it, it, there's so much in the show that everybody can relate to. And we see that he's, he's concerned and he feels feelings because he hasn't heard from Sticky while they're away. Can you talk about that and what he's going to do to try and resolve that situation? Yeah, so um, Rainey, like in between season one and season two, he's just been chilling with his paramol. Um, he's in his happy place, basically, but he does really miss his friends. So in season two, he reunites with them, and it's all a really great time, but everything goes awry after Mr. Benedict and number two are kidnapped. Okay, all right. Um, Marta, since Constance has been living at Mr. Benedict's home, how has that been for her? Has that been a good experience for her? Or how would you describe that? Yeah, um, I think that um, she really likes being at Mr. Benedict's house. And she, uh, she has enough people and books and things. And uh, I think she, in season two, she gets more confident in the company. I mean, she's confident enough, but she gets more comfortable in the company, and um, she just doesn't want to show it. Okay. How, how challenging is it for you, Constance, to not smile? Because you're smiling a lot already on this panel, but in the show, she does not really smile a lot. Yeah, uh, she didn't really smile a lot in season one, but we're going to see in season two. <laughs> Spoiler. I know. <laughs> She smiles. <laughs> Seth, let's talk about Sticky for a minute. Um, what has he learned over his time away that'll maybe help them in this quest to save Mr. Benedict and number two? Um, one of the things I would say is not be so antisocial. Um, in the first season, Sticky was really reserved into himself. So in the second season, we can see Sticky like really work as a team with people rather than being a one-man show. Emmy, I, I know I'd like a magic bucket. I think every, does everybody want a magic bucket? Yeah. Right? But my question is first, what, what do you think Kate's instinct is first right off the bat when they hear about this kidnapping? What's her instinct to go into action? I think uh, Kate's first instinct is always to just run off and fix it herself. So the second she hears something happen, I feel like all that's going on in her head is, okay, how do I fix it? I just, I mean, she's always looking for solutions, as I think that's just kind of who she is, you know? Yeah. How much do you think they, your, all your characters have changed from season one to season two? Do you think they have changed? Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Rainy, particularly, he's grown more confident. 
Sticky is still smart, so that's a, that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, Kate's, um, Kate's slowly learning to work with other people. Okay, Marta? And as I said, well, Constance is feeling more comfortable in the company, but she just hides it behind her comfort mask, and she, she feels comfortable when she's being okay. Constance. So, um, and there's a lot of changes for everybody in season two, I think. And as we saw in the, the part of the episode that we saw, the, the kids aren't really going to have Mr. Benedict or number two around, at least at the beginning, because they're not there. How are they going to pull all this together without that guidance? Do they? I mean, it's, just, it's pretty hard. Man. They might not. It might end horribly. Yeah, we, we yeah, never you, know. You've only seen the beginning. You have to watch to find out. Okay. Does the scene in finish? I mean... It, <laughs> Yeah. Um, Kristen, so number two we know has a lot of skills and talents, and we saw a little bit in here. She can also saw logs. We saw a little clip. Talk about shooting that. What was that day like for you? I don't know how many saw logs you actually had to saw. Or what. Can you talk about that for a minute? Yeah, that was exciting. Um, in that scene, we got to train with a professional log saw. I, what's it, a lumberjack? From lumberjack. Yeah, lumberjacker. Did you say log star? Lo lo well, That's now I cool. am. I said log saw -er. um, but a log star um, from Minneapolis who looked like he was in a black death metal band from Norway. And he, I can't remember his name, but I have to look it up. And he was wonderful, and he is actually in that scene. He's song, he's the winner. But he, um, from Minneapolis, and so we learned how to, like, go back and forth, and Mamea and I have a good, a good rhythm together. Um, but that's that scream, I'll never forget it, because James Bobin directed that episode, and I think he made me do that scream like 15 times. Yeah. He's like the Kubrick all of a sudden that day, like so torturous, like he's one of my favorite people on earth, but. And we mixed in just a touch of Falcon oh, yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's oh, a did? tiny bit of uh, real falcon cry mixed in gently. Oh, <laughs> I kind of thought that I that You should have told James that, that and he wouldn't had you do it so many times. Sorry. Guess TV's not real, huh? <laughs> let, let me ask the producers, um, in the writer's room, when you're thinking of these things that you could have your cast do, is there like a laundry list of things? Like, who, who wanted to see Kristen saw some logs? That's a Matt Man Freddy. I was, Man Freddy. I was sending them videos all summer of uh, professional lumberjacking uh, competitions, and I was like, this, this must find its way in somehow. All four of us have some bizarre thing that we've all tried to get in some show or movie for years, and we were like, this is the home for it. For me, it's a dirigible. It's a travel by a blimp. That I really, and we get to do it this time, and I'm so excited. Uh, Kristen, let me come back to you. So we, we saw that number two and Benedict are kidnapped. How does she particularly handle being kidnapped? Not well, not well. You can't cage number two um, without a fight. Um, but the fight's gonna be you know, a logical one. She's going to try to use her, her smarts to get out of it. Um, but, yeah, she's mad as hell. God, I'm still mad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Tony, on the other hand, how does, how does Benedict handle it? Especially, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's so lovable that he's, he, at first I think he thinks it's one of his benefactors that's bringing you, us to a dinner or something like that. Don't but it's not. Um, first of all, thank you guys for coming. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Nice. That is. This is so nice. Thank you. Um, we love our show, and we really appreciate you being here. But Benedict is just, you know, he's full of joy, and I don't think he, he's always trying to see the positive, like, hey. That's it's, the problem. It's, a, yeah. like it's irritating me now. He's like, yeah. it's a free ride somewhere. But then it hits him. <laughs> okay, and I, and I love when you're playing either character. It's so distinct, but I want to know, how do you get there? Is it just once you're in so hair and makeup? So much pain and, and trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of trauma. Um, getting there, um, well, I will say, like, <laughs> I will say, like, there's, like, we are very thankful to be on the show, but we're a slice of the pie of the show. Hair, makeup, production design, wardrobe, these guys are at the top of their game. So it's like, they really are. And so even, like, you know, even Curtin's world is, like, blues and, darks and Benedict's world is very warm and joyful 
And so when you're kind of in the wardrobe and the wig and the, and the set design, you can't help but kind of morph to that character. Um, but there's little things like Benedict's posture is atrocious. Um, and then Curtin is very, you know, kind of tightly wound. Um, but one thing I was saying earlier is that when Curtin talks to somebody, he's not really listening to them. He's just kind of speaking at them. And then Benedict is always engaged and actually listening and stuff. Yeah. Okay. How, how would you say, we, we didn't see Curtin in what we've seen so far, but has he changed from season one to season two? Well, we think, we think he's changed. Like he's, this is what's baffling, is we ended our f first season where we thought we solved the emergency. We thought we were done with Curtin. And then he frickin' reinvents himself as a self-help guru selling happiness. So we're just like, sorry? And Benedict, I will say, Benedict's not that joyful up top because he's kind of resentful to Curtin because he kind of took the credit. Um, but it's like, Curtin, you kind of you see the cracks in the veneer as it goes along, you know. Okay. And, as, and as far as this joy, we, we do see something in the first episode where he exhibits a lot of joy. Yeah, well, see, Curtin, <laughs> I had a talk with, with, with um, Phil and, and Matt and Todd and Darren about how Curtin is so tightly wound that he, we kind of thought he needed some form of expression. And so he uh, has a dance number in the, uh, in the first episode. Yeah. yeah, which are we gonna see that now? Wouldn't it be great if we could see that oh, clip? Sure, we can see that now. Of him dancing? Yeah. I think we can. Here we go. I'm guessing you didn't just make all that up on the spot. On the spot. On the spot. Yeah? No. Didn't you twist your ankle that week? I did. I did. The, the yeah. two days before I twisted my ankle. Um, so that was part of it. I, you were using that. I was using that. Yeah. But that was choreographed by just this wonderful lady who I'm blanking on her name right away, but she was lovely. Kristen Shaw. Kristen Shaw choreographed that. Right there next to you. Thank you, Kristen. That was so nice of you. You know what? I give you the moves. That. Yeah. <laughs> And so, but it was really fun. And I love that he has that, you know, behind closed doors, he has that expression. And if Dancing with the Stars calls? Well, that's not gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> Draw on the line, I like it. Um, also, I personally love the music that's throughout the show. Um, Stevie Nicks has some Jefferson Starship. I know there's more coming. Can you guys talk to, who, who's the music supervisor and? Well, the music supervisor is uh, Randall Poster, who is probably the most legendary musical su music supervisor there is, who did all Wes Anderson's movies and does all these things that have this wonderful landscape. And I think, again, the four of us all have, like, this real affinity for, like, the first season was kind of like, we talk about how it's, like, music that we'd hear in the backseat of our parents' cars, like AM radio, that this world is full of, like, just super positive jams, you know, that's what people listen to. And this year it gets a little more into the 80s, like, a little more... Uh, slinky synthesizer <laughs> stuff, you know, um, like Stevie Nicks. But there's, there's definitely songs, again, each of us have a thing that we're like, we gotta get, I gotta get Find Your Way Back into this show. And the rest of us are like, we'll do it, okay. And I will say, Phil's giving props to Randall Poster, but these two guys come up with smash hits again and again. I mean, all four of us do, but really, then this find, find, Stand Back. Stand Go Back ahead, was, ladies. well, when I would say this, when the first idea, we were sitting in our, my backyard, and we were just hanging out, and Tony was like, I think I need to dance. I think I need that's to dance. That's when Phil wrote Stand and Back. That's when I wrote Stand Back uh, oh with gosh. Stevie Nicks. <laughs> oh my, Phil and Prince. No, and, and immediately came to mind. I was like, it's got to be Stand Back. It's got to And he was like, okay. So, and it really went from that right to the screen. Okay. Well, not, not to put the younger cast totally on the spot, but when you hear that music, do you, are you curious where it comes from or... 
because we know it really well. But it's like a museum, like you found it in a museum. Like, um, <laughs> have you guys heard that? Have you ever heard that song before? You know what? I haven't heard it, but it is going on the playlist. Uh, nice uh, nice. I feel like it just triggers a uh, an emotion that I've never felt before. Good. So. <laughs> I feel like I, I must have. I mean, this is the type of music that I kind of, I listened to all the time when I was younger. Nice. Um, and I mean that. Everyone's laughing. I don't know why. I, I'm, I, <laughs> I like, um, like the radio that was always on in the car was like, best hits of the 80s and 90s. So it's, it's like, it was like my favorite music. So I used to listen to things like, like all of that. Now I listen to... Indie bands. <laughs> <laughs> Me personally, um, I love the song. It's my favorite song. Uh, I listen to it all the time. <laughs> I don't believe that. Ma Marta, anything you want to add here? Um, I think I heard that song uh, on a TV channel with like songs from like old songs. From <laughs> <laughs> songs from old people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, th I think I heard that one, but I think it's a cool one to dance okay. for. All right. Thank you, Marta. <laughs> okay. Um, for, the, for the producers, can you just talk about shaping season two a little bit um, as far as how closely are you sticking to the books? Are we going in our own direction now? Where, where are we at for season two? Uh -oh. Do it. So season two, season two has the same spine and structure as the perilous journey, but we add a lot of stuff that's not in the book. And, and the whole concept of happiness is, is a new concept. In the book, you never saw Benedict and Curtin together for the majority of the book. So that was something immediately we said, no, 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 you have to see that journey and what it's like with these brothers together. And we're going to learn so much of their history and a lot of the trauma that we saw in, in season one when they were little kids is going to play out now. Um, so it's, it's, I just have to say, the show is such a labor of love for all of us involved in this. We've been doing this a long time, but this show is very special, and I think everyone that works on it feels it. And Matt and Phil, when you guys, when we read your first two scripts, we were so blown away, and I read this book to my daughter, so I am so blessed to be standing here with you guys with this show. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> and just to add to that, like, I think we... When we looked at the second book, The Perilous Journey, we thought, we knew because of like developments of the first season that there were, just wasn't gonna be a way to like do the book, period. But we were like, what are the things that we, because we're fans first of this, so we're, what are the things that we need to see? And it was like the shortcut, the world's fastest ocean liner and the ca character's cannonball and Captain Noland. And so those of you who know and love the book, the second book, you're gonna see a lot of that in there and then hopefully just melded with all this other stuff Todd's talking about as well that we wanted to bring to it. And, and once you had worked with the cast for the first season, did that shape what you wanted to do in season two once you could really see what they were all capable of? Did it change things at all and what we'll see? Oh yeah, we, I think we all like just are so, um, we're so excited to see what happened when these guys all became the mysterious Benedict Society, and they're in person, like you can see, they're the most like interesting, cool people, and so we're like, yeah, they've kind of become them and the character, and it's this like amazing sort of just the combination of, of them. So like, we're now at that stage, the fun thing about doing another season, and this is so true of, with Tony and Kristen, and like Tony, we always go through all the scripts with him, we talk, you know, in a very deep level about everything, it's like we're all doing this together now, and we're kind of drawing inspiration from each other, you know, and that's what's really fun because we're like, oh, I can just see Emmy doing this. I could just see, you know, Marta doing this. So. It's also really um, exciting to, because I really, that first season, there are such powerful messages that come out of this show. The first season was, especially in the middle of a pandemic, kind of the truth rising above all the noise and the chaos that was going on. And then this season, the whole idea of Curtin selling this idea of happiness. And what Benedict brings to the table is true, authentic happiness, which is a whole spectrum of emotions. And to me, that is just so relatable in today's society of, I mean, not bashing social media, but the technology is just selling this idea of happiness. You need this, and it's quick, it's quick. It's, that's not authentic happiness. Authentic happiness is the whole range of emotions. So it's to see that contrast played out in this story, that's, that's pretty cool to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And 
I heard a rumor. Who, who of the cast got to work on the iconic Queen Mary ship? See a show of hands. Who all got to work on that ship? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got to work on it. It's pretty great. Okay, Marta, I'm going to start with you, though, because I, I hear maybe the experience wasn't all smooth sailing on the Queen Mary. Well, I really liked it on the Queen Mary, even though people say it's haunted, and <laughs> there's, we, we felt some moments when we felt that there were ghosts around us. And one time, my, my mom was going down the stairs, and she felt like somebody pushed her, but nobody was there, so I'm sure that was a ghost. But it's, it was still really interesting to learn the story of the ship, of course. Yeah, the ship's super cool. Uh, the whole area is really awesome. It was, um, we got to see most of the ship. We, we took like a tour uh, at, at some point and they told us about some of the history and it's, it's really impressive. It's really, it's crazy. I mean, the ship's huge and it's done so much. Okay, yeah, the ship's haunted. Um, <laughs> there are definitely many things that went on in that ship, I'd have to say. Um, but filming there it was incredible. I mean, you know, working on the water was cold. Um, but uh, no, nah, it was cool. We got to w walk all around the, uh, the ship. We went from the top and worked our way down. But yeah, it was really cool to film there. Yeah, there was, like, next to the schoolroom, there was this really creepy elevator. Um, when we went in it, like it would creak. I don't know if that was just poor maintenance or a ghost, <laughs> but it was really scary. In, in general, because you guys, there are scenes that are full of danger and they're scary scenes. Who actually gets a little freaked out by that stuff? Anybody? Um, I do, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> listen, I don't play when it comes to I, that. Listen, like, <laughs> come on, man. There, there, there's some stuff we don't know about, you know, <laughs> we all don't know about. <laughs> I don't know, the ghosts were chill with me. Uh, they were chill with you, but not with me. They, they, they did something to me. Uh, never right after that shit. <laughs> but, um, uh, the engine room, creepy. Uh, a lot of weird things. But uh, I think aside from the ghost stories and uh, all the weird things and doors closing by themselves, it was, uh, it was pretty cool, you know? <laughs> I liked it. Tony, you keep shaking your head like, no. Nope. I'm, I'm just so glad I wasn't there. <laughs> Yes. Tell me, there, there's a lot of scenes where everybody's kind of literally running around, like through the house and other places. How much choreography goes into that, where you all have to know exactly who's going to cross with who and which direction? Is, it, is that a complicated day for you guys? Yes, there is, there is a lot of like, choreography. Yeah, um, a lot of days are complicated. So, But we pull through, and you know, with the help of the great directors and the PAs and everybody around us, we get through the day and... Uh, yeah, go PAs and uh, all the directors. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, no, no. I agree with Emmy. <laughs> I'm thankful yeah. for all like the exercise and all the running around because like on set they have crafty where they have free food and like last season I got chubbier. <laughs> like I am going to admit that. Yeah. So I am thankful for the other exercise. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Who does does something, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Tony and Kristen, I'm personally a fan of all your work. I know a lot of people here are. Do you, is, is, is there room in shooting for you guys to improv a little bit or go off script and just go with your kind of internal instincts at times or any chance of that when you're filming? Tony tells me to ignore my instincts, um, to shut them down. <laughs> And, um, and that's, I think that's right. And that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, this character is, number two is smarter than me, so it's harder to improvise, to be honest, because her vocabulary is so elevated that, um, that I just have to, like, say what they wrote. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm yeah, but grateful you, for it. I remember you uh, bit into a lemon, and that was a purely improvised moment. Yeah, if it's a nonverbal thing, <laughs> like biting a lemon, I, I'll bite a lemon. <laughs> they didn't know I was going to do that. <laughs> and, I, and I think, I think um, we have some new faces this season as well. Um, for the producers, can you talk about any of the characters that we're meeting? I don't know how spoilery. Yeah, sure. There's, I mean, from the book, so there's Captain Nolan and, and Cannonball, who I mentioned, who are this 
great pair. They're played by Fred Melamed and uh, Joel De La Fuente, who are both amazing. Um, uh, and um, Bronson Pinchot shows yes. up and is nice. hilarious. Uh, I won't say what his part is, but it's, he's a very put upon character. And we also have a llama. Uh, we have a llama guest that, yeah. oh, yeah. An alpaca, to Haley, be specific. Haley an Joel alpaca. Osment, ladies and gentlemen, from The Sixth Sense. That's right. Uh, uh, Haley Joel Os Osment is in the show. So we got a chance to have all these like amazing people um, come in and do. We always say like we, we, we want this show to be the show where the character that shows up in another show would just be like walking past in the background. We're like, we're going to follow you for a minute and see what your life is like. So that's where, how you get all these great actors to show up for some of these. Parts. Yeah, if you step into someone's place of business in the show, it's, they're going to have an opinion. You're going to learn about their grievances, that's for sure. <laughs> But being uh, in L.A., I mean, that, that was a great part about being in L.A. is that we were able to draw on such a big community of actors and, and there's some really great guest parts here. Yeah, because season one was Vancouver, season two, Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Yes. Was that any different for the actors at all or did it feel any different? Yeah, it felt, it was great because the first season we were so excited to do the show and then the pandemic hit, and so those that we all went to Vancouver, and we couldn't come home, back home for about six months, and so that was tricky, <laughs> tricky. But this season shooting in LA just was fantastic. Be so close to family, mm -hmm. really great. Anyone else? Yeah, um, Vancouver. I love Vancouver. I like the weather a lot. It rained. I like the rain, um, <laughs> and there it was just there were so many cool places there, but. It was great being back home because um, uh, my, I mean, I, I want to say here, I keep forgetting I'm not in LA right now. Um, <laughs> my friends are all back in LA and um, it was cool being able to like film the show and then still be able to hang out with them. Cause I sort of, I fell out of touch with a lot of people in the first season. So it was nice just yeah. getting to be there. Hi, they're probably watching right now. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would have to say uh, shooting in Vancouver was, you know, a little different than with protocols and everything. I mean, everybody had a mask on. We could not eat next to each other. You know, somebody take their mask off and say hi, and you'd be like, hey, like, who are you again? You know, uh, I think it was like that for everybody. But um, definitely filming in L.A. was a lot better, closer to home for me, at least. And it's warm. It's not raining 24-7, which is a plus. <laughs> I liked filming in Vancouver better um, because of the rain, um, and also. You sound like a dark group. I know. <laughs> yeah, the rain, uh, but it was it was harder, I'd say, because like Seth said, all the COVID protocols and everyone wearing a mask and everything. Do you know what's wild though is the the crew uh, of Vancouver put together a book, and they had pictures. Each crew member had a picture of them with the mask, and then they did a picture without the mask because none of us saw their faces. Yeah. For five, we shot for maybe five months, I guess. Yeah. And we would, if, if they took off their mask and we saw them at the grocery store, we wouldn't know who they were yeah. for five months. Wow. It was really wild. Sad yeah. times. Wow. Marta, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah. Um, for me, both Vancouver and Los Angeles was really new and a lot of experience because it was my second time in Los Angeles. And in Vancouver, it was also my first time. <laughs> And both are really different. In Vancouver, I went skiing with Emmy. And that did happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as she said, that did happen. And we went skiing. Uh, and of course, I like the rain, too, as everybody in this group. And it was really fun to go to Los Angeles, too, because I have a lot of friends in Los Angeles. And um, it's really warm in here, and the ocean and both of the cities were really new to me and a lot of experience. Okay. And I, I just wanted to do a shout out to these kids because they are so adaptable and you guys are such good actors and people don't, they forget that they have to go to school every day when they're shooting. So it's incredible that you guys deliver these amazing performances. They're beautiful human beings and I think we should all clap for those four. <laughs> Great. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So before we wrap up, um, I want to ask everybody on the panel one word to describe season two. I'm going to start all the way at the end with Darren. 
One word for season two. Adventurous. Okay. European. Kind of piling on here with globe trotting. Hyphen it. Delightful. Okay. Roller coaster because it has a lot of unexpected turns. <laughs> Funny. I'm gonna say weird. Oh. <laughs> Benedictive. <laughs> it's like a play. <laughs> Wish that was the last one. Um, <laughs> trapped. This is a number, but I'm gonna say a 180. Okay. All right. Mm. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that's you a could, good you way could to spell okay. it out. Awesome. It's a word. Ooh. Okay. So you guys, season two of the Mysterious Benedict Society premieres with two episodes on October 26th. Then episode drops every week on Disney Plus. Thank you, everybody here. Thank you here. Thank you. We're going to show you the trailer for season two. Thank you. All right. One more time, they're backstage, they can still hear you. Make some noise for them. Thank you so much for joining us. At this time, gather up all your belongings and exit out the rear of the theater. And we'll see you again later this afternoon. Thank you so much.